Hello, hello, Easygoing MC back with another episode of Easygoing Survival. Uh, I think we're on, what, we're on episode 13. Ooh, scary 13. Evil actually works that well because 13 is a Halloween number because we're building a Halloween esque farm today. Even though it's not Halloween, it's like June when this video comes out. <laughs> um, we're building a witch farm today. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do or whichever one you prefer. Um, yeah, we are building a witch farm. We need lots of redstone, lots of glowstone. So, yeah, that's why we're building one. Uh, we've been working on the base in the last couple of episodes. We did a lot of work over there. I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. If you haven't seen it, go check out episode 12 where we build up the inner ring. And, you know, for me, I mean, this is a couple weeks ago because I'm so far ahead in recording for you guys. But today, like the day I started recording this episode, I took a long walk. Uh, I am a runner. Actually, people don't know this, but I run, but I'm in between training right now. And I start my summer training for me in a few days, but I was just on a nice long walk, you know, a couple mile walk, for like 40 minutes. I had this wave of inspiration for the base that I cannot wait to implement. But that's going to have to wait because we need a witch farm. We need glowstone to implement. We just need these items. I'll stop running around. I'm sorry. I get really spazzy in Minecraft. But yeah, we're going to build a witch farm. It's Il Mango's 1.14.4 design. Uh, it's one of the most efficient ones out there. Uh, it's not going to require a perimeter, which is nice for now. We'll probably build a perimeter one in the future, but yeah, I got most of the materials here that we're going to need. Uh, so yeah, I guess we should crack on over. Uh, we're gonna, I already figured out which portal we're going to build at, um, so I know where we're going to go. So I'm just going to get more obsidian, I guess, get more obsidian, and then yeah, head over there to the witch hut. We're now at the future location of our farm. There's our witch hut over across the way. I figure I had to make the nether portal over on the shore. This is actually a pretty optimal area. Uh, we're going to have to do zero spawn conditioning because the water is so deep where it is actually, uh, which is fantastic uh, by all means. So essentially the only, the only thing is we are going to have to clear some water out, which is not fun. But eh, at the end of the day, it could be worse. Uh, there could be more water here. So... Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll probably go find some sand for my base to do it. But yeah, I guess, yeah, the next step would be to clear out the space where the farm's going to go. So we just got to build like a, build a stone brick wall. Uh, this thing is, isn't going to be pretty. Maybe we'll make it pretty in the future. But for now, it's going to be a ugly stone brick farm. So yeah, that's the way it is. Anyhow, I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a second. I cannot imagine clearing water prior to two things. First, um flying machines uh we can make flying machines now that clear put sand in place for you also prior to sponges <laughs> like filling up of water i guess like i'm not sure what was needed to do large-scale water removal because i think the biggest ones obviously are guardian farms but still this is a shulker box of sand that filled this like cube <laughs> and i mean it took so long it took like like 40 minutes just to clear this little space <laughs> so i don't know Oh, I cannot imagine. The game has just changed and become so much easier in this regard, which some people argue is a bad thing. In my opinion, it's a good thing because it means, like, instead of grinding for 10 hours to do stuff, you have, like, you're able to do it faster through farms that people have designed and also new in-game mechanics. So I definitely think it's net benefit because then it gives you more time to build. Because ultimately, all of this is just so we can build in survival mode. Uh, the farm is just the added fun to do it. Anyhow, I'll stop rambling. Uh, this is the first spawning plaid. There's going to be two more on top of it. I'm going to put in a lot of the redstone. I'm, I have little progress updates just because I, once I get into building a redstone contraption, uh, yeah, I just I just get going. Like, I can't stop. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to crank through this. And, yeah, probably put in most of the redstone, honestly, in the interiors and maybe one or two progress updates throughout. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's kind of... Yeah, I'm bad about those kind of things, giving you guys progress updates um, when I'm building like heavy redstone farms just because I want to get in it, put on some TV in the background, just cruise. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, guys, I'm going to do this. I'll be back in a sec. And I've put in the first layer of the farm. This is the hardest part because, you know, I was getting used to it. I had to extend this part of the water out on either side by a few blocks because there wasn't enough space, unfortunately. But the way this works, as you can see, every time it's like I trigger this tripwire, it fires, right? So say I jump in. It doesn't work with me. Oh, yeah, it does. Basically, you fall through the floor. So the same thing happens to the witches. So basically, they just like fall through all three floors whenever they spawn. And yeah, that's essentially how it works. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure it's fairly lag friendly as it doesn't use any um, redstone dust, which also helps prevent lag. Obviously, with all the pistons firing, it won't be the most lag friendly thing in the world, but it's from El Mango. He did his best. Uh, it's a good farm, and we're only running it when we're using it, so my game will be turned down to the minimum anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. Anyhow, I'm going to put in the last two layers. I've already sort of started that process of these observers on either side of rails. But I'm just going to put in the last two layers, uh, get that done. It's the same exact to this. Don't want to bore you guys. So I'm going to crack on with that, and I'll be back in just a moment. Anyways, guys, we're back. I've put in the last two layers of the farm. So yeah, as you can see, pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, yeah, it's all looking good to me. Uh, weird. It's weird that this like, alternate sides. You know, I'm missing trapdoors too. I really, I don't know, I was really tired. I was doing this at like 2 a.m. Hopefully I didn't like mess it up. I might have messed this up. Oh no. Well, this lines up still, right? Yeah, I just need to fix this, I guess, then. All right, well, I got to do some fixing. But anyways, I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to put in the killing contraption down below. Uh, we're actually going to kill the witches via entity cramming, so that should be pretty pretty basic to do. Um, yeah, it will make more sense once I show you. But basically, as you guys know, entity cramming, if there's more than 24 entities in a single spot, uh, then mobs slash even, I think even players will take damage. Um, so essentially, you can put 24 minecarts on a single rail, and then that's 24 entities. So if a witch or another mob fell into that, uh, they'll actually die. So yeah, we're going to use that process in order to kill the witches. And yeah, it should be should be pretty awesome. So I'm going to fix up this farm. Uh, and then I'll put those in. And I'll be back with that once I'm finished basically with all the redstone in the farm. All right, guys, we're back. And I've basically finished up the farm. The only thing left is to finish the roof. Um, the reason why there's like stairs like this is I guess having it drop down like this increases spawning rates. I'm not exactly sure as to why, but I'll trust Il Mango on that one. I'm sure his game knowledge is like a million times more than mine. In fact, I am not just sure. I know for a fact that it is. Anyhow, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to work on item storage. Uh, well, not item storage, but item transportation. And the reason for that is after we put the roof on, mobs will start spawning, not just in here, but also down there. And we really don't want to have to deal with doing redstone down there. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to feed this dropper uh, just into an item transportation line. And we're actually just going to send it to a storage system. I think we are going to locate... Um, hmm. I might do some clearing, actually. I might clear some land out. I think we need to clear some of this mountain, or we should anyways, uh, for the efficiency of the farm. So I might clear a chunk of this hill out, and we'll put it basically... Well, I'm not really sure where we want to put this, actually, now I think about it. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll just put it right here, right next to the farm. Uh, we'll put the temporary storage. Uh, we'll eventually, at the end of this episode, we're going to replace it with shulker box loaders, uh, also Il Mango's design. And, but for now, I'm just going to make sure it just gets to here because I really want to be done with that area so I can half slab the bottom and then the farm is working. Because once I put the roof on, I really don't want to have to go back in here because witches will be spawning and we don't want mobs spawning down there. It's just going to be a big mess. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish up the roof after that and then also spawn proof this immediate area and then we can go from there. And we're back. And as you can see down below, the roof is complete. We're actually up at our AFK point, which is optimized basically so it limits this conditioning. Uh, because of the way the killing mechanism works, and I'll show you in a second, it basically means that the, the mobs aren't falling. So basically we can go up pretty high and essentially load basically just the farm. Uh, I already did some checking underneath, and there's just, so there was a couple of caves kind of close, and I lit those, but it was really easy. We do have to light some of the surface, and it will be a little worse in our case since we have this mountain, which means more will be in the range. However, there's a really cool tool from Vanilla Tweaks, and we will have to open LN and allow cheats because we do have to run a command. Uh, it's spawning spears. So what this actually does is it will create a sphere for you. So a blue sphere. And as you can see, it created a couple of spears. So what this essentially means is this, is, this inner sphere is where mobs cannot spawn. This is 24 blocks away from us. This outer sphere, however, is where mobs are able to spawn. 
So as you can see, when we go around, uh, yeah, we can essentially see where mobs are going to be able to spawn for us. So, yeah, what this is telling me is since this looks like this is intersecting this surface right here, and then it comes out down there, uh, which does make sense. But this means that this part is in the sphere. So we have to light up all of this area. Um, anything that's like below the sphere like this, we can clearly see it gets disconnected. It's fine, but stuff like this that kind of juts into it roughly we should light up. And yeah, this is a very useful tool for making perimeters. Uh, there's definitely more useful ones. Um, there's a mod called the Mini HUD mod, which is a pretty sure a fabric mod that you can use to do a similar thing that might be more accurate as it provides more of like a actually like solid sphere so you can see exactly where it is. But for our purposes, this provides like a rough estimate on where we should light up. So we can just go around in the circle, light up this mountain fairly well. I already kind of started, uh, but I decided to get the data pack to show you guys first. Um, but yeah, down here we can see, if we look down below, um, the farm is in fact working. Uh, we have this thing, basically the witches get flushed in and then they get, you know, they get killed pretty easily, just like so. And yeah, then the mobs are flushed over here. Uh, and then we'll just make, I was going to do this in the sky, but I think we're just going to make a quick and dirty storage system uh, wherever, right here in the water, probably just build up some blocks, maybe to like the side over over here potentially. Uh, but we'll do that quick and dirty. I'm not too worried about the look of this area since we're going to be building a bigger witch farm much later in the world anyways. So this is sort of like the beginning, the first half of the season witch farm type of deal. Anyhow, I'm going to finish conditioning the surface and also give this thing a test run and make sure uh, where we're positioned is correct in terms of getting drops. And yeah, I'll be back in just one moment. This thing is kind of hard to get up to. All right, there we go. All right, be back. Farm is now working. I did do some inspection work with the replay mod. Uh, basically just AFK'd up there for a minute and realized a couple problems I just fixed. Uh, first off, I guess, I don't know. I followed the instruction in the video for where to AFK, but maybe I did it wrong. Maybe the video is wrong. I'm thinking it was probably me that was wrong. Um, regardless, uh, it was a couple blocks too high, so I went and dropped the two blocks. We were getting some witches despawning down in there. Okay, I thought there was a witch in there for a sec, but no, it's just a cobble wall. Very dark. Uh, and then second, I guess I missed the block. Like, the way I built this rail, um, I guess the way I built the farm, I built the timer slightly in the wrong position, maybe like on the wrong side. And it wasn't powering one of the rails. And it took me a really long time to figure out like what was going on. And I just realized like the rail strength wasn't enough. So I actually, I just had to like make a quick modification with a one piece of redstone dust that basically you know, fixed the farm. Uh, and then also I just missed a block as well, so that didn't help. Um, but yeah, the farm is now working how it's supposed to. Uh, the witches are spawning. I did do a double check as well. I went up there and then snooped around and no mobs were spawning at night in any caves or in any of the surfaces uh, using the replay mod as well. And actually, if we come down to find our little hole in the ground somewhere, somewhere around here, we'll actually, we actually see drops have started to accumulate to an extent. So yeah, this thing's working. Uh, the next step is, of course, we wanna build a storage system. So I'm basically just gonna build up a little storage system real quick. Um, yeah, right now, I guess, with the shulker box loader, it should be pretty easy. Il Mango's design, by the way, everything is in the description, the vanilla tweaks mod, the tutorial for the witch farm, as well as the shulker box loader I'm about to build. But yeah, I'm gonna go do that, guys, and I'll be back once I'm finished with that, I guess. And we are back, guys. And as you can see, I've put in the shulker box loading system. Um, yeah, so the, basically the way this works is there's going to be a shulker box here. Once it fills up, the items in this hopper will start to back up. And once that gets to a certain point, it will lock this hopper up above, which will the observer will detect this, which will then fire, um, which will then actually fire this up here, um, which will then cause the shulker box to break. And then when it goes back up, it actually, I'm pretty sure it kind of, it sends another pulse right here and that causes a shulker box to be put in place. Uh, so that's essentially how it works. Um, it's basically a one wide tileable kind of version, same idea of the thing I built uh, for the slime farm. Um, but yeah, I just realized, why am I gonna have the item stream down here? Um, anyhow, the next step is to put in item filters and then we just gotta braise up a water elevator which I don't even have enough glass to do this, but you know what? I'm not wasting glass on this project. 
Like it's never going to be seen on camera. I'm only going to see it when I'm gathering items and etc. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be ugly. Maybe we'll, maybe that'll be a project, but you know what? I'm just not too worried about it. I just want to have a, we've been doing a, a, aesthetic builds like every single episode since the slime farm. Now I just want another video where we just create an ugly farm that works really well, but doesn't look that good. Anyhow, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to finish this thing up and I'll check back with you guys in just one moment. And guys, just like that, the sun is setting on a farm well done. I'm not really sure how this episode panned out. I feel like I did very short clips, but honestly, like, I don't really know. Uh, if maybe on length might be a little short. I mean, it's big progress. This was a big project. So as you can see, I've added in the item filter on top, standard impulse SV design, uh, the one that everyone's always been using. Uh, I finished up this item elevator, water elevator, pretty easy. And yeah, basically I've, I've, I don't know, I don't know, this might be overkill, but I put in like five stacks worth of shulker shells with shulkers in here. So yeah, I guess I hope it, hope it works. Um, but yeah, this farm's actually completely ready to go. I think if we turn it on, let's go, let's go do this a test. I'm lagging so hard. I don't get why. Like, I don't understand what the deal is. Like, why am I lagging? Like, what is so laggy in this area? Like, you know what I mean? It's like a farmer's turn. The computer's just so bad. My God. I also think it needs to get cleaned, too, but that might help. All right, so let's stand in the AFK spot, you know, for 30 seconds. Um, after this clip, I am going to go... Why does it not look like it's enchanted? Oh, because my animations are turned off. That's why. That's why the light chair looks normal. Um, yeah, so after this, I am going to go AFK for several hours, maybe overnight, and basically just check back in once I'm done AFKing just to see how many drops we get. I'm just giving this a quick test as the farm is on. We should theoretically see some level of items flowing in. Hmm. Oh, yeah. There are some, there are some. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'll probably give this a replay mod tester, but other than that, yeah, I'm going to go AFK for a while, make sure the farm's fully working, and yeah, see how many drops we get. Should be around 4,000 an hour, uh, spread across all of the drops, with sticks getting obviously double that, which is on a, you know, pretty slow, but when, given that it's that many spawning paces, that's not too bad. Alright guys, I'm going to go AFK, I'll be back shortly. now the morning guys uh afk'd for party yesterday and i went to bed pretty late um way too late uh but i afk'd for however long i was asleep and we managed to get uh, about four of each uh there's some three but uh there was a couple issues with the thing uh, i accidentally had a block on top of these pistons which was causing whatever one would go like the ones next to it or one next to it would be bud powered uh which means that they weren't filling up correctly so like for example i think in sugar um, or this is sugar. It's like almost a completely full one in there. It's just like almost not full. So like, yeah, so this is the most accurate. There's about four, uh, shulker boxes of each. So yeah, I mean, if we open this up, it's just fully packed full of redstone dust and that's awesome. So we got a lot of glowstone, got gunpowder, sugar, spider eyes, glass bottles and sticks. You get more because they drop twice as often, I think. So yeah, we got tons of stick quicks, which we actually can use for fuel and a super smelter at some point. Anyhow, I guess that sort of concludes this episode. Um, a quick update, I think my performance should hopefully get better soon. I'm um, getting my PC cleaned out, my laptop, and I've heard that helps a lot. Uh, I have a MacBook and they heat throttle, so hopefully that helps manage the heat, because although like my MacBook Pro has never performed exceptionally good uh, performance-wise, it definitely performed a lot better when it was new and had no dust. So hopefully, you know, getting that dust cleaned out helps with the thermal throttling and thus the performance, and I can actually record a smooth gameplay again for you guys. Uh, at least in the tutorials, it's smooth. It gets a little choppy in survival just because I feel like there's always more going on. Anyhow, I guess that's going to do it for me, though. Uh, I hope you enjoyed building this Witch Arm. It was definitely more of a technically driven episode, but we've been doing so much building, I really just wanted to do an episode where it's just like, I just put the redstone in, I didn't care how it looked, I just grinded through it and had a lot of fun with this project, so... 
yeah, uh, we have to do have some overflow in here. But yeah, that's about going to do it. I uh, hope you have an easygoing day, and I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye. All right, and join the Discord for some post-episode discussion.